Today with Joseph Prince. When Paul writes to the believer, he says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. In Colossians, he says again, we have forgiveness of sins. In Colossians again, he says, having forgiven you all trespasses. That means what? God saw your entire life. We see from a, a time uh, perspective, day by day. God sees your life until the day you die or the day you meet Jesus face to face. Amen. In the rapture, God sees your entire life. When God put your sins on Jesus and God says, having forgiven you all, God means all. The gospel truth is this. Listen, Christ came to die for our sins. All our sins by one offering on that cross. Hebrews 10, for by one offering, He has forever sanctified us. Amen. By, by that one offering, we are perfected forever. Perfected in terms not in our behavior, but in our conscience. One of the best ways to fight your fears, your anxious, anxious thoughts and your worries and anxieties is to pray in the Spirit. You will quench all the fiery darts. He puts all kinds of thoughts in your mind. Amen. All kinds of bad images. Well, pray in the Spirit. Amen. Pray in the Spirit. I was so excited about this and I taught my son this. And I said, when you pray in Spirit, you're like the fireman. You're putting out the fire. Your, 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 the Holy Spirit, the language comes out like a river. You mean like the Malayan? <laughs> yes, I said like the Malayan. <clears throat> <laughs> all right, quench, say all, quench all. Say all. all. Don't you like that word all? Yes. Okay, and take the helmet of salvation. By the way, the rest of the pieces of the armor are all in participles. Okay, they're all in participles. But here's the first imperative in the Greek. It's, it's a command. Take the helmet means receive the helmet of salvation. It's literally the word receive. And receive is an imperative. Receive the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Now, stop here for a while. Let's look at all the pieces again. Okay, go back again to the beginning. All right, look at all the pieces again. You have number one, waste your girded with truth. The first piece, right? Then you have the breastplate of righteousness. Number two, you have your feet with the gospel of peace as your firm foundation. Three, drop down. Shield of faith. Four, helmet of salvation. Five, Sword of the Spirit, six. God never ends on a six. What's the seven? The seven is this, praying always of all prayer and supplication of the Spirit. Now I'm going to tell you something really powerful here. Actually, I don't know why they don't, they don't translate the very first word in the Greek. If you re read the Greek in the verse 18 in, in Greek, the very first word in Greek is the word dia. And dia always means by means of through the instrumentality of. And for some reason, or true, okay? By the means of, through the channel of. I don't know why they don't translate that word there. But the, uh, the translation that translates that is Young's literal translation. Young says like this, through all prayer, you receive the helmet of salvation, you receive the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, through dia, by means of praying all prayer, and supplication, praying at all times in the Spirit. That's praying in tongues. Wow. How do I receive the helmet of salvation? How do I receive that, that specific rhema word? Because the word, go back to uh, the King, uh, New King James again. All right, praying always of all prayer. And now it says, notice that. How do I receive the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, that specific? This word here is rhema, the saying of God. How do I receive the utterance of God, that, that one word that I need? In my fight, I receive it by praying in the Spirit. When I pray in the Spirit, I become sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And God gives me the spoken word inside here. Right? There's the written word and there's the spoken word. And the spoken word will never contradict the written word. But we all need the spoken word. We live by the rhema of God. Can I have a good amen? So how do I receive the rhema? How many want God to speak to you? How do you receive the rhema? How do you receive the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit? By praying in the Spirit. Okay, you can go home, Ray. That's all. Okay, <laughs> praise God. That's an easy job. <laughs> no, listen. That's how you pray in the Spirit. Now, helmet of salvation. Notice the helmet. This is the first time the imperative appears. God is saying, okay, you have all these pieces. Now, 
receive imperative in the imperative mood. Receive. Receive the helmet of salvation and receive the sword of spirit by means of praying at all times in the spirit. So when I pray in the spirit, the first thing I receive is helmet of salvation. Now this helmet of salvation is first Thessalonians tells us, go back to, go to first, like, we who are the day be sober, let put on the breastplate. Now helmet, the hope of salvation. Same writer Paul by the spirit says, hope of salvation. You see that? Hope of salvation. Go back to Ephesians 6. What is a helmet of salvation? And that's why I find that when you tell people or when you teach that people, there is a place where if they do something, they can lose their salvation, then I'll tell you this. You've just broken the armor, the, 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 the helmet. There is a hole in the helmet. The moment you're not assured that you are safe, don't forget what I said. All the pieces of the armor has got to do with the gospel truths. Not old covenant truths. You see, the Ten Commandments is the truth, but it's the truth of that day and age that we are no longer under. Today, we have only one new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. The more I find out how much Jesus loved me, we'll love one another. That's the only commandment. That's why we are, we are called to function in love. And have a good amen. All right, not called to function in bitterness, resentment, anger, unforgiveness. You will suffer. Regardless of what the person has done to you, forgive the person for your own sake. Amen? So there's the only commandment that we have. And it's the only commandment that we can keep because the last part makes it possible, as I have loved you. So notice, how am I supposed to love you? As I, as I, Jesus, have loved you. So I must be conscious of Jesus' love. We love because He first loved us. We love God and we love one another because He first loved us. Amen? But all these pieces of the armor has got nothing to do with Old Testament law or truths. It's got to do with the truth of today. Jesus looked at the Pharisees and the Jewish people of His day and those who were His disciples even. And He said this, You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. These are people who know the law. And yet Jesus said, You shall know the truth. What truth? Gospel truth. Amen? The gospel truth is this. Listen. Christ came to die for our sins and for our sin. All our sins by one offering on that cross. Hebrews 10, for by one offering, amen, He has forever sanctified us, amen. By, by that one offering, we are perfected forever. Perfected in terms not in our behavior, but in our conscience. The chapter before that tells us perfection. In other words, when we come to God, we have no more imperfect conscience. Imperfect means you have sin on your heart. You're afraid to go to God's presence. And that's why people don't spend time with God because or they, they, are, they are afraid to talk to God. Even when they pray, I always like to say like this, they go into God's presence, they throw their request real fast and they get out. Lest they think a bad thought or say something wrong and they drop dead. They still have an Old Testament mentality. They don't understand that Jesus has, by His blood has opened up a new, say new, and living. In the Old, Old Testament way, when you come to God, it's an old and dying way because the more you come, chances are you might drop dead. Amen. So they only go once a year. But now, the more, the more you stay away, the more you, you, you are dying. The more you come to Him, the more you are living. Aren't you glad you came to church today? Amen. Aren't you glad that the Lord gives you a fresh dose of renewal of strength and youth? Many of you receive that. You don't even know it. Look at your face. Your face is shining. It's so bright already and you're still shining. Stop it. Top and bottom, I'm covered. You know, usually when I go back to my room and I look into the mirror, my eyes are a bit red. I don't know, is it your glory? Or is it the light? Amen. But it's this for the... Well, someone asked, why don't we make it more dim and all that? It's for broadcast, okay? Because uh, they say that they can't even see my eyes when I look down. So, <laughs> uh, I was born like that. Okay, so, <laughs> praise God. The seventh piece is always the praying, if all prayer and stuff in the Spirit. Now, you can lose your weapon. You can lose your whatever it is. If you're lost and you are surrounded, you're besieged by enemies. But as long as you have your communication, line still open. You can ask for help. You can call for, for, for bombing raids on the enemy. Amen? As long as you have communication. So praying the Spirit keeps that line 
with headquarters. Amen. When you are, you are besieged by the enemy. So don't feel like you're alone. Amen. May this message bless you and help you to know that all these pieces, are you believing right? Usually when you believe wrong, that's the area that is vulnerable to the devil. Now, there is a teaching that's been revived that a Christian can be demonized. A Christian can be... Uh, no, and People try to say it nicely. Oh, you cannot be demon-possessed, but you can be demonized. But the problem is that people get to fear that they have a demon. Let me tell you this. A Christian cannot be demon-possessed. Know this. God will not share His holy of holies, your spirit. He will not share His holy of holies with another demon. He won't come down there and say, okay, uh, you take that side, I'll stay down here. All right, no, no way, no way. Even an Old Testament priest, if he's not ready, he's not prepared, he goes into the Holy of Holies, he dies. How much more a demon? There's no way God will share his, you are the temple of God. But can you be attacked from outside? Yes, but we got the shield of faith. Amen. Amen? I remember years ago, the helmet of salvation for me wasn't working too well because I remember how it happened. I had a bout where I started believing that I had committed the unpardonable sin. Now, I'll tell you what happened. I can trace it back to the very day that my thoughts became an open field to the devil's thoughts and fiery darts. It's almost like the, the gates open. I don't know what happened. The gates open and almost every other hour, I have blasphemous thoughts about God. Later on, I found out that John Bunyan also suffered that. John Bunyan of Pilgrim's Progress. I was so encouraged to know that. And he went through the same journey. The one who wrote Abounding Grace to the Chief of Sinners, the one who wrote Pilgrim's Progress, Right, he had the same problem, his blasphemous thoughts. But what opened that door? I had very bad thoughts about God, almost constantly. I tell you what opened the door. I read a book. I read a book. I got hold already of good teachings and all that. And I don't blame the author of this book. It's not his fault in the way I receive it. But nonetheless, I read this book, Christian book, and it says that you can lose your salvation. I don't know why it bothered me. Also, I said, wow, I was enjoying this romance with the king. I was enjoying the Lord's love. I was enjoying the peace of God. I thought it was secure forever, but all of a sudden, I read this book and it says you can lose your salvation. A Christian can lose his salvation. And the guy went to point out some ways that you can lose your salvation. And the moment I, I, I heard that, or I read that, something happened to me. It's as if my mind, the helmet, opened up. The hope of salvation was gone. The confident expectation of salvation was gone. I won't make it to the end. I, can, I might be safe now, but can I make it? Hope we got to the future. Can I make it all the way? I started worrying that I might lose my salvation. And the door was open. All of a sudden, I had phew, a blasphemous thought about God. And I said, how can I think that about God? Another thought about God. Psh. Then another thought about Jesus. Psh. Another thought about the Holy Spirit. And the moment it came to the Holy Spirit, this verse came to my mind. Another fiery dart. How many know the devil can quote Bible? But it's never accurate. So I didn't read it accurately. And it says, you have committed the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And because you have committed blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, there's no more forgiveness for you. But what Jesus said, all right, were, were people that saw him in person and rejected him and says he has an unclean spirit. It must be people who see him in person and people who will see him in person when he returns, not in the rapture, but the second coming of Christ. With the Jews then, not with the believers. Believers, your sins are forgiven. When Paul writes to the believer, he says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. In Colossians, he says again, we have forgiveness of sins. In Colossians again, he says, having forgiven you all trespasses. That means what? God saw your entire life. We see from a, a time uh, perspective, day by day. God sees your life until the day you die or the day you meet Jesus face to face. Amen. In the rapture, God sees your entire life. When God put your sins on Jesus and God says, having forgiven you all, God means all. Now, this won't cause people to have you know, a, a propensity to want to sin, knowing they are forgiven much. Because Jesus says, those who know they are forgiven much will love Him much. It's for the lack of preaching this, we see sins rampant in the church. We see people struggling, you know. And now back to, to my story again. I started having blasphemous thoughts about the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden, you know, I didn't know it's been shot from outside. I, it felt so much coming from inside. 
Then this verse was quoted to me. You blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, you have no more forgiveness. And Jesus is not referring to the believer. A believer cannot commit this sin. A believer cannot commit this sin. I tell you, I cannot sleep at night. I cannot, cannot rest in the daytime. I, I was troubled, troubled. I went to this man of God to ask for deliverance. I went to that man of God for ask for deliverance. Man, I, I, my life was hell. All right, you can read all about this in Destined to Reign and probably in a few other books that I, I've written. But my life was like hell on earth because of my thoughts. My thoughts became so dark. And the more I had those bad thoughts, the more I had bad thoughts about God. You know? And all because I believe. And it was this area that was attacked. Notice that? that the helmet of salvation was no, no longer there because of wrong believing. But when God brought me back, that's when God introduced to me the gospel of grace. When God showed me that I'm saved and I'm, the Bible says, having obtained eternal redemption and I give them eternal life. No man can pluck them out of my hand. My Father who is greater than all, amen, has given me them and no man can pluck them out of my Father's hand. So you have the Father's hand and Jesus' hands and we are completely protected. The propensity of the flesh, the flesh is so bad that it will try to say, yeah, what if you jump out? See, the flesh always wants to find something. You know, it snatches defeat from the jaws of victory. You know, and God comforts you and says, what, what, if, what if you jump out? Okay, now you're talking about free will. Okay, I, I really uh, don't want to go into the discourse of pointing to all the verses at point. I don't care if someone has a dream, someone has a vision, someone has a, 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 a Jesus appearing or someone has this prophet of God saying to them this and all that. Must go by the Word. We must go by the Word. And the Word says very clearly, I give them eternal life. If eternal life is not eternal, pray tell me what is eternal life. Can I be good? Amen. Eternal, I give them eternal redemption. Jesus offered Himself by the eternal Spirit. Are you listening? Eternal, everything that we, Jesus touched is eternal. The moment you are saved, is eternal. Are you listening? If you live like, you know, someone says, if you live like, I don't believe a Christian lives like a devil, but he can live a defeat, defeated life for even a few years. It's not for us to judge. But if he's saved, he's saved. Amen. Are you listening? God will deal with the person. There is chastisement. Amen. God will deal because he loves the person. God will deal with the person. But, it, it, it doesn't mean the person has lost. It's lost. They need to get saved again. So I was getting saved every other Sunday. Every time there's an altar call. Back then, people don't know me, so I can go up there and get saved again. <laughs> Amen. And I was getting saved so many times. I don't know how many, how many times I was born again and again and again and again and again. <laughs> My thoughts became so dark, so, so dark. It's no fun, you know. I remember carrying my big Bible looking for a deliverance minister and it started raining. I had a big Bible and choked a donkey. It was a big Bible and I walked, walked in the rain and it was raining, you know. And all of a sudden I felt that, yes, I was crying in the rain. The song came, crying in the rain. And I was thinking to myself, even the heavens, Tiena, you know, even, even the heavens is not for me. Here I am, I'm lost looking for the house you know, it was a landed property of a minister that prays for people to be delivered from demons. And I thought I had a demon because of all these blasphemous thoughts. In fact, I met a few ministers that say, yes, you have a demon. It's a demon of blasphemy. Another one told me, when he laid hands on me, I still remember this, it was in the bookshop, Christian bookshop. He laid hands on me and he says, yeah, it's very dark. I happened to see him there in the bookshop and asked him to pray for me. He prayed for me and says, ah, oh, it's very dark. It's, I sense something very dark on your mind. And then he walked off. <laughs> I'll never forget that. He walked off right after that. That one like... Whew. There was another Christian bookshop I went to. I was reading a lot of books in those days. All right? All kinds of books I could find because I, I didn't have the money to buy those books. And the, and the bookseller, the lady says, you want to buy or not? <laughs> and I put the book back, walk out slowly. And that's why when I see young people uh, browsing books and all that, um, I, once I was in my... Our, our own bookshop here and saw a young person browsing. No, not, not a bookshop, sorry, not a Christian bookshop. I saw a young person browsing and uh, I saw the books that he put back, put back. So I took back all those books that he put back and I bought it for him because he reminded me of me. 
the, the, the lady who sold, sold uh, in the, the lady in the Christian bookshop, she never knew that she was talking to a pastor one day who would preach. Okay? God bless you, lady. If you're in this church, it's okay. It's all forgiven. Amen. It's all forgiven. Praise the Lord. Don't feel guilty. Don't feel bad. It's okay. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> I was so sad. Even heaven is crying. You know? Heaven has rejected me. I, I, I'm just walking in the rain. My, my, my Bible got soaked. I got soaked. And I didn't care. It's like, I'm, I've lost my salvation. So I walked down Orchard Road. I remember passing out tracks, believing that all these people are going to heaven, but I'm going to hell. I did that thinking that I'm going to hell already. I've lost my salvation. Amen? They're all going to heaven. So hopefully when they go to heaven, God tells them, God asks them, who got you saved? And they say, oh, Joseph Prince. All right, then God will think of me in hell. <laughs> that was my reasoning. It was terrible. Now some people are listening to me, oh, that's why, you know, that's why you are so afflicted like that. No, no, everyone is afflicted to a certain extent. I have a calling to preach the gospel of grace. So I believe that because of my calling, the experience I went through is more extreme, amen, so that I can understand the torment that people go through. So I understand when people go through de depression or that, I don't take that lightly. I've been through that. Amen. What got me out is the gospel of grace. And in those days, by the way, I was confessing my sins as much as I can. I was confessing every sin. I confess more than any of you put together. Like Paul says, I thank my God I speak in tongues more than you all. I, speak in, I, I confess my sins more than you all. <laughs> when I talk to you and I think I exaggerate, I'll stop for a while. <laughs> because exaggeration is sin. Okay, in case you all didn't know, exaggeration is sin. <laughs> when you say everyone had, no, everyone had a smartphone. Not everyone. Then you, I, I will confess. Ah, sorry, I, I said everyone. You know, every little thing. If I feel a bit of, of, of uh, uh, desire for the opposite sex, it's lust already, it's lust, it's lust. I must not have any desires. <laughs> All right? I confess even desires. I confess wrong thoughts. I confess everything. All right? Why? Because I really believe if one sin unconfessed will keep you out of fellowship with God. And don't stop arguing about a relationship or fellowship. In the Greek, it's only one word, koinonia. So don't argue with me about fellowship or, or, or relationship. Go back to the Greek. Okay? You all know John 1, uh, 1, uh, John, 1 John 1, 9. Do you all know 1 Corinth, 1 Cor 1, 9? You all know 1 Cor 1, 9? 1 Corinthians 1, 9? It says, God is faithful, not me. God is faithful by whom you are called into fellowship by His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen? I have fellowship with His Son and it's not based on my faithfulness. I have koinonia with His Son and it's not based on my faithfulness. God is faithful by whom you were called into fellowship. So anyway, uh, I, was, I believe this, that is for the believer, and I believe one unconfessed sin can put me out of fellowship. Therefore, I must confess every sin. So I became my own Holy Spirit, trying to find every sin to confess because I dare not be in a place where I'm not in the flow with God. And that also led to the, my mind becoming, you know, uh, all kinds of... Purpose. Even though I, I thought I'd be going to hell, I was still hoping that I can get back into God's good, you know, favours. And um, it was terrible. It was a terrible time. I don't want to uh, bore you with all the details, but when God unveiled to me the gospel of grace, it set me free. All right? No one can move me from that position that I know that I'm forgiven and I'm forgiven forever. Amen. Amen. It's too late. Amen. It's too late. You cannot convince me any, 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 anyhow that, that Jesus' salvation is only good, eternal life is only good until... You commit one sin. And, and that sin, no one agrees on, you know. We don't know what sin it is. Oh, you renounce Jesus. By the way, coming back to this, you can jump out of Jesus' hands. Somehow, He's trying to assure us, no man can pluck you out of, and man there is italics. No one, no demon, nothing can pluck you out of my hands. And, and my Father is greater than all, right? And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. What part of never you don't understand? And then we say, oh yeah, the flesh will always find something. The flesh will find, well, what if I jump out of his hand? You jump out, you bounce against his father's hand. <laughs> righteousness is a gift and your salvation and your righteousness you can never lose because you never gain it by your works in the first place. How can you lose it by your bad works either? As a thank you for your gift of any amount to the ministry, you can now request for Joseph's three CD audio series, Work Not Required. Discover why righteousness is a gift. 
Join Joseph in this eye-opening resource as he shares how to freely receive God's forgiveness, righteousness, favor, healing, and peace. See your faith grow as you learn why you don't have to strive to please God, to enjoy a real and personal relationship with Him. And for a gift of $75 or more, you will also receive Joseph's two-DVD album, Break Every Bad Habit with Christ. In this powerful resource, Joseph shows you how you can stop struggling in your areas of guilt and frustration and step into faith and freedom. Experience true transformation when you personally experience the Father's love for you. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Get your copy now at josephprince.org or call us toll free at 1-877-901-4300. contact with Pastor Prince about eight years ago on television about 12 midnight. It was outstanding. Never in my life have the Word of God been revealed to us like it has been through Pastor Prince. We got to bring the gospel back. You know what, people? Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So what is the truth that set you free? Christ is the truth that will set you free. It yeah. has been a tremendous walk. The liberty and the freedom to love, the freedom to live, the freedom to be who God has called me to be has been more than I can articulate. It's not about the man. It's the message in the man that God has put in there. And we are here to stand to say that God is alive, rich and well, and so am I. Next on Joseph Prince. You pray in tongues, you feel the love of God. God loving you and even love for others. Pray in the Holy Spirit, keep yourself in the love of God. In the book of Galatians, for example, it says, after faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Actually, the is there. After the faith has come. What is the faith? Righteousness by faith. Are you listening, people? Are you listening? And that is where we all want to rest. Can I be good in there? Have you been blessed? Jude says, pray in the Holy Spirit, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, pray in the Holy Spirit, comma, keep yourself in the love of God. So the way you keep yourself, not your love for God, but God's love for you, keep yourself in the love of God. You know how you keep yourself in the sense that God loves you? When you drive your car, all of a sudden someone cuts in front of you, you feel anger, you pray in the Spirit. All of a sudden you realize God loves you, you are special, this is too, too special for you to lose over someone who just cut you. Joseph Prince Ministries is a Section 501c3 nonprofit organization, and your gift is tax deductible for the amount that exceeds any fair market value of the materials you receive from us. 